my goodness, R.H. Thompson! And I go here, do I go here? George, I got the gloves. You wanna drop them? I em? got the gloves. You wanna drop them? You can take me, buddy. You wanna drop them? You can take me. Come on, fuck them. Boy. Good. Good, good. Oh, look, you dropped something. You're gonna have one, I'll have one. Are these your actual gloves? Uh, no, I bought. Uh, no, okay. don't ask, don't ask where I got. Look these at these gloves. gloves. What'd you yeah. get? Seriously? I bought these from a guy outside the Moss Park Arena who sold me a whole hockey bag for twenty dollars. I needed the equipment, and it only occurred to me, like a day later, maybe he stole the bag yeah, from think? somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Think? Okay. Welcome to the show, man. How are you? Thank you. I am fine. It's good to see and you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Just to just explain to people okay. what this project is. It's so incredible. So the I, I mean, it does relate to us. It relates to everyone in the room. And the reason we're doing this is because I think your history, my history, your family history, your family history is all part of something that needs to be acknowledged. Yeah. And the only way that we can really do that is to sort of encourage you to go home and ask your parents, your grandparents, your cousins, your great aunts, is to say everyone must be recognized. That we've always remembered, you know, those who were killed in a war as them. And only since our guys came back from Afghanistan and we started naming them, we thought on the centenary we should actually name the 9.5 million who were killed over five years, name them individually, display them in schools, show them on phones, show them on tablets, and then, so your family and your family can then go to the site, type in your family name, and start to explore and see if your relatives are there. Just think of the number, and I'm sure you have. 158 soldiers in Canadian and Afghanistan for, for military, 158 dead. Nine million, and that's just military dead. That's not even counting civilians. That number, I don't think any, any war could, could exist today people wouldn't be able to comprehend that number. Well, you, st you start to open a door in history and it all, it pours out. The First World War, they say, if you put your f toe in, mm. you go into your ankle, then you're up to your knee and you never get out. The world, that war actually changed relationship of history, your family, my family, our families were used as cannon fodder, which is we really want to want to do this. And when we say, you know, 68,000 Canadians were killed or nine and a half million, overall will kill, that becomes a, a number or a piece of information. And the question is, how do I make that into an experience right. that you start breathing slower, going, that's what nine million means? Did you have a message going in to this? And was it different from what happened when you came out of this? George, we are on tricky territory here. Welcome to my neighborhood, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we are on tricky territory. We ask the questions, you come to the conclusions. Right. So we, by actually honoring the 9.5 million, and for, I dare say, for the first time, putting a dead German's name beside a dead Canadian's name, beside a dead French name, beside a dead Ital Italian name, we are saying, and, and the soldiers have said to me, they said, Robert, you know, once we are dead beneath the ground, we are equal. Only the men living above the ground make the differences. Right. We are dead below the ground, we are equal. And that's the resonance we're trying to get. Look at that. The biggest game ever tackled. I mean, using Hamilton football at the time yep. to get people interested in this. Yep. It was everywhere. Did you ever think, though, that this kid here, this young fella, would have been doing this for a living? Look at that, we'll put it up. Are you in a Boy Scout uniform? You are in a Cub Scout uniform? I'm in the Cub Scouts. I'm a sixer. Look at this. Yeah. Right down my arm. Oh, yeah. But oh, that my now. God. That's my sister Janet. What is going on here? Wow. George. Listen, it's surprises, surprises. I'm just saying that that photo there is. Um, was that the remarkable Mr. Pennypacker? That's what it is. Oh, my God. No. The Curtain it's, Club. It is a play at the Curtain Club. It's the first play I was in. I didn't learn that I shouldn't be in the theater. I should have learned then not to be an actor and run away and become a physics teacher. And that's my mother taking me into the theater. Isn't that awesome? Wow. I mean, this is a, her really life, is. right, was this stuff, yeah. too. Yeah. When did it occur to you that this is what you could do, though, and you could become very good at it? You don't, know, you don't want to know the truth, George. I do! You don't want to know the truth. Is the truth that you still don't think it? I joined the drama club in For, high school because yeah. I had acne. I could put on makeup and yeah. kiss girls in plays. Yeah. <laughs> Incidentally, listen. You know what I know the truth? The teacher I was referring to was my drama teacher, and oh, that's really? pretty much the only reason I got into it as well. So it's natural <laughs> to do that, isn't it? Is that it? your teacher there? She's right there, yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Hi. But, um, was he good? No. He is fabulous, isn't he? Isn't no. And we're losing him to hockey, no. but that's okay. No, 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 no. I'm just adding on. <laughs> Stick around more with R.H. Thompson. Right. Hi there.
right, we're going to go way back with R.H. He's an English rock star, and the great Gordon Pinson is his lawyer. Stick around. But I want you to swear to me. Look at me. You won't utter another word till you are on the stand. Don't hold your water. I'll just be casting me pearls before the swine. Well, I, I don't want to keep you. You're the guest of honor, so... Do you have a car? What? Do you like to drive fast? Is there a radio? Sure, I got a radio. Would you like to give me a tour of the local attractions? Now? Right now. Let's take a drive. I haven't been out of this house in a week. I don't know. That's not my opinion. Hopefully the next one will be even better. There he is in Moonlighting. Right? I mean, dude. Dude. Sybil before Shepherd. we go on, Sybil I, Shepherd. before we go on to anything like Sybil Shepherd, I just want to say something out loud. I want to say that George has done this country proud. Oh, you're Thank you. I want to say this. George has done something remarkable in that he speaks to the country and those of us in the country in a totally Canadian, humanitarian, equal, fair, but passionate way of speaking to people. And that is rare. So he has done an enormous service to our country and the CBC. Thank you, sir. Well, listen, I am... Um... As, 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 as you know, if, 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 if anybody's ever pulled anything off, it's chances are because somebody awesome did it before them <laughs> and it inspires them, which I'm sure is true for you as well. Can I play a clip from the judge? Let me play this clip. Watch this. Do you know that a criminal conviction can keep you not only out of Canada but out of the whole of North America permanently? Of course it does. No tours, no recording sessions, well, we nothing. We didn't miss out on a thing. Come on, I'm not going to be convicted, am I? I'm not guaranteeing you a thing. But I want you to swear to it. Look at me. You won't utter another word till you are on the stand. Don't hold your water. I'll just be casting me pearls before the swine. Look at that, eh? Look at that. Two of them, oh, three, but... It's you and Gordon Pinson in this really intense scene. I mean, what do you make of Gordon? What a, what a man, right? Never mind a performer, but what a man. I don't know about you, about George. I don't know about you in the room, but, you know, as you go through life, there's people ahead of you down the queue that kind of cut the snow, you know, they kind of break the trail, and you kind of, you follow in on the trail cut by others, and Gordon was one of those people for me. You know, you want those enormous talents ahead of you because they're somehow taking the brunt of the wind and the cold, and you can follow in their footsteps. And Gordon was one of those people. He's Great. huge. Have you figured out what it is you're trying to cobble together? Sometimes our, our path doesn't become clear till later. Have you figured out what, what story you've told? I went to a fortune teller when I was at theater in London. I went to a, uh, when I, a theater school in London when I was whatever, whatever, 21 or something. I went to Lambda and I went to Portobello Lane. I had my palm read and I did the crystal ball and the lady who did my palm plus the person who did my astrology charts, they all said to me, you are going to be a public speaker. I'm like, I'm an actor, I want to be an actor. No, they said, later in your life, you're going to speak in public. Because I'm an introvert, I'm not an extrovert. You think, people think that actors are ext extroverts. No, no, most of us are introverts, and we hide behind characters. So speaking in a part is different than actually speaking publicly. And that's something I have discovered as you fight for equality, social justice, you know, the arts, the environment. You have to speak publicly, and that has come later in my life. Um. How did I get onto that? Oh, I like that. You've... How did I get onto that? That's way better than an e-cigarette, by the way. It There's is. no vapor with that. It's yeah. pretty fantastic. It's a virtual cigarette. <laughs> I don't smoke. Did you? Uh, did it become apparent to you that you had to be that guy? <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> did I know? <laughs> no, people pushed me into it. Yeah. I mean, people started, well, maybe like you, George, people say, well, you're good at that, go do it. Mm -hmm. I said, well, no, I'm shy, I can't do that. No, do it, you're good at it. So you, you sort of get pushed beyond your boundaries and then you discover that you do have a role to play, that there is a gap that needs to be filled, that voices need to be spoken about. You know, you do have to speak on certain things. Dude, what a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much. Thanks, George. All right, to everybody. The world remembers. It's theworldremembers.ca. That is the website. Ari Thompson, we'll be right back.